On the 1st of April, I logged this account to Varlemore, a brand new area released to old school RuneScape. What started off as a complete joke is now easily my favorite account to log into and actually grind out every single day. The plan for the series is simple, obtaining every single possible drop in the area of Varlamor. That includes all of the Perilius Moons uniques, but also all the Colosseum uniques. And all of that while only maintaining one life and only being allowed to use items obtained in Varlamor. We finished the last episode with very decent stats, we got to 40 attack, 40 strength and 30 defense, but most importantly we obtained the full adamant and the rune mace. The plan for this episode is to finish a very hard grind. I want to make sure that by the time the episode ends we have 43 prayer to work with, that is going to allow us to kill every single monster in this area. This is easily the best time to get a grave digger, inventory full of loot. Okay, there we go, we now have a zombie mask which is all of the items. I I guess the next I will get are all the emotes and then I will start getting lamps. Stat update, 40 attack, 46 strength. Now that I got a free bank, I'm actually gonna do a little bit more hill giants. I just rotate, by the way, if you were wondering, between hill giants, do those for a bit, then crabs whenever I'm doing something AFK. So that's like my loop at the moment. And for some reason, it's really enjoyable. Just finished a very long session of training, got all the way to 54 strength, but I also went from 30 to 40 defense, simply so I could AFK a little bit harder. This stats are already starting to look very good so I do believe it is time to start working on some other things. We're gonna work towards our next upgrade which is simply killing Mosh Giants to obtain either a Steel Kite Shield or a Black Square Shield. Both of those are going to be amazing. Black Square Shield being my best in slot shield for a little bit of time. Here we are on the very west side of an island. There's some Mosh Giants. I can get Mind Roots from the floor. I can get Air Runes from a desk over there. That's gonna be literally my only way to train magic very early early on. Later on it gets a bit easier, funnily enough, so early game is gonna be the hardest. Alright, let's see if this works. There we go, this is how I can get air runes, I can get a staff here as well, and then obviously mind runes down there, so magic training is super doable for me. Fun fact, the spawn rate of these runes is actually quite quick, so you can be killing most giants and getting decent amount of it just passively. Bada beam, bada boom, best in slot completed, there it is, black square shield obtained. I actually wanted to stay here a little longer, not gonna lie. Also, all the way up to 20 prayer, I did not plan that whatsoever, almost 55 combat, so I kind of wanted to stay here a bit longer. This is it, this is the gear that I can most realistically get in Varlamor before level 50 defense, before Perilius Moons. In a way I got a back to back. It's so weird to me because I should not be enjoying playing this account as much as I'm enjoying it. It's so simple but so fun. I'm literally just killing Moss Giants, Hill Giants, Crabs, getting my stats up, AFKing a little bit, recording here and there. It's like a really enjoyable experience and it's so weird because I'm so used to playing my maxed main account where I have everything in the game that I don't get to enjoy simple things like this, you know? I was unaware about this drop, uh, air runes. As you can see, I am uh, also stacking up on the mind runes, the inventory is almost finished. So next to hill giants and moss giants, there's also these bandits that are worth killing just slightly more east of where the moss giants are. So every now and then I do believe I'm gonna be killing some of those as well. They tend to just drop runes really Really more than anything runes and coins so very simple drop table fun fact uh, you can walk right through the buffalo <laughs> it has literally it's just there bro the fuck ladies and gentlemen my very first lamp is about to happen now what will i actually be lamping that might be the question and the simple answer is hunter in order to complete perilius moons we're gonna need 48 slayer 20 hunter 20 fishing 20 rune crafting and 10 construction both construction and fishing can easily be trained rune crafting very very hard hunter very very hard and we might do small exceptions for both rune crafting and slayer we'll see in the future so how much xp are we talking but there it is Hunter we get 15 experience beautiful doing a little bit of a research before going back to training and there is an iron X in this uh, house just above the center of the city this is gonna be probably my best X for quite a while I'd say and going just one more floor up we actually have an oak short bow right here which is gonna be super helpful with all the arrows we've been getting at his drops lately and there is also black rope there which should I think help with magic does it change anything yeah it gives me three magic bonus so whenever i'm training mage that's gonna be helpful for sure and funnily enough leather gloves are also just a very tiny increase might as well wear it instead of nothing we got another lamp 10 experience in hunter
doing a nice mix of mosses, hill giants and bandits and we're left off with 40 attack, 60 strength and 40 defense. Also snagged myself a couple of air runes and if I do a little boom 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 we can now very quickly train a little bit of magic level as well. It's slow, it's very hard to get, that's why I'm including moss giants in my rotations. I don't really want to be picking up runes and hopping worlds at the moment. I simply start my rotations by going to moss giants, picking up a bunch of uh, runes from the drops and then I come here to hill giants finish up my inventory, cast all the spells that I can, and then go to bank and do it all over again. Slowly but surely, we're gonna get some magic levels up that way as well. We're now all the way to level 4. Every air rune counts. We're now level 5 magic, meaning we can now cast water strikes, meaning we now get a bunch more XP. And water runes are really, I think, only obtainable through heal giants. So with enough time and patience, I can actually get runes to cast just about any spell. Out of runes, back to melee. It's that simple. Well, account ruined, we're now in Varok, uh, series is ended. On the real though, I haven't done this event in I don't even know how long. I got a sapphire for it, not bad. Good morning, that's probably an update. Magic staff over regular staff. I mean, surely, right? There is a six magic bonus difference, which is very noticeable actually. And we also decided to train all the way to 45 defense. I do think every now and then I'll train a little bit of defense. I don't think attack is that important for me at the moment since most of the monsters don't really have that much defense but defense comes in handy because our gear is very limited so whenever i get hitless i can stay in the trip longer therefore just enhancing the experience but we are just a few more casts away and obviously we are just using wind strike because we don't have a good method of getting water runes but as soon as we get this level which is right there we are now level 9 with level 9 we can cast earth strikes and this is much more doable for us simply because we have a ton of earth runes and we can pick a ton more on the floor as we're training melee anyways. So yeah, the only limiting factor is really the air runes, but since we're killing moss giants, we get them as a drop very rarely. So I can kind of work on melees, prayer, and then on the side, magic whenever I get a drop. I am definitely going to die to this rune light crashes. I don't know why it's happening, but it happens too often where my game just closes and the rune light just crashes. And if I lose the hardcore like that, I was just at most giants. Yeah, this is a problem and I don't know how to fix it. And it's happening actually too often. I do not like the look of this whatsoever. Okay, we're back. Are we dead? We shouldn't die this fast. Yeah, this is an issue, man. If I'm in the middle of a moss giant kill, I mean, that's why I'm trying my best to be full HP. But imagine this happens when I'm doing perilous moons. It's just the GG account over. I don't know what to do about it. My rune light literally just self closes. Here is our very first longbone. I also used up all of my runes again and we're up to 11 magic. That is oddly peculiar. Three black square shields on the floor. The stats are starting to look absolutely phenomenal. We're on 40 attack. 64 strength and 51 defense and we have no plan on stopping anytime soon the trips are getting longer and better every single rotation i'm getting almost 100 mind runes which eventually once we do get more air runes it's gonna be pretty helpful just as a quick reminder we are working towards 40 magic teleporter house is going to be extremely important in order for us to train construction which is one of the requirements for perilous moons and obviously we're gonna need extremely high melee stats in order to even consider finishing perilous moons so that's why there is a lot of emphasis into training these combat stats as high as possible, as early as possible. Now, some of you guys noticed I'm still level one Herblore, and that's because in the future, at some point, I will go ahead, get out of Varlamor just to unlock the Herblore and do some other small exceptions. But that's all for the future. For now, we're just grinding, we're just training. We got ourselves another mime event. If you guys do not know, all of these random events, at first they're very bad, but we are building towards having everything unlocked. Once you have everything unlocked from an event, you are then able to start getting XP lamps. We pull mime gloves, but not only that, we also get mime legs. So two new collection log slots, what are we dropping? Still mad helm for now. And once my inventory looks something like this, I go back to bank, deposit everything, steal a full inventory of cakes and do it all over again. I've done enough combat training, we are now very comfortably sitting on 40 attack, 65 strength and 51 defense. It is now time for me to start working on thieving and more ways of making money. And whilst I'm doing that, also work on farming and then eventually open up the Herblor for our account. 
But the short term goal is we need to get ourselves 38 thieving. 36 thieving. There is level 38 thieving. We can now pickpocket master farmers. The reason why this is so important for me to reach early is because I need to start farming and planting herbs early. Getting to 38 herb lore is going to be huge because of the moonlight potion, which is basically a super attack, strength, defense, and prayer potion all in one. So for that, it's gonna take a long time of farming, a long time of herb lore training. Yep, that's something we gotta start working towards. Got to 39 thieving, ended up getting a bunch of herbs and planted everything I could for now. It is now time to properly unlock herb lore and some of the other small things, so it is time to leave Varnemore for the very first time. I might mention this multiple times throughout the episodes, but the reason for me leaving Varlemore has to be very specific. In this case, I cannot train Herblor until I unlock it through completing the quest. In order for me to complete the quest, I need to gather items, because if I don't allow myself to do that, the account is simply dead. Whilst we're here, we're also going to do another exception, and that is, we are simply going to grab the forestry kit from outside of Drainer Village. Two of those things are super important for the account, because with Forestry Kit, well, we can participate in the minigame. With the minigame, we can actually get some Hunter XP as well as Construction XP. So all in all, super helpful. By speaking to Friendly Forester just south of Draenor, I am now allowed to get myself a Forestry Kit. And since this is free, I'm just gonna get a couple of those and this will always be in my bank. We're killing a cow for some raw beef. And here's a bear for some bear meat. We now have all the items required in order to finish this important quest. Quickly dunking some meat into this cauldron. Speaking to keg mix will allow me to complete the quest. That was a nice little few minutes away from Varlamor. And that now unlocks the Herblor skill for us. That is perfect. And the very next exception is something that most people do at some point in their account, and that is a Varok Museum. Now, you may be wondering, why is this guy doing Varok Museum, and why is he not just Lamping Hunter from level 1? And to give you a very simple answer, I'm doing these exceptions in order to make this account exciting to play. Nobody wants to wait for over a year in order to play the account. We are gonna do the museum, and then we're gonna lamp the rest of the way. We need 20 Hunter before we can go ahead and even attempt to complete Perilius Moon's quest and my current playtime is 1 day and 17 hours and I have only gotten 2 lamps so far so you can do the math it would take forever to lamp up this hunter skill and 48 slayer that is years of lamping and very unrealistic starting to feel anxious being out of the Varlemor for this long here is me speaking to Orlando Smith after finishing the entire quiz museum a thousand slayer a thousand hunter we're now up to level 9 our lamps are gonna give us a little bit more XP. It's still gonna take a long time, it's just gonna be slightly more doable, and now let's quickly return back to my land. I'm tired at looking at my level 1 range, so I'm gonna be hopping a few worlds and getting a bunch of iron knives. I really only wanna get to level 5, so I can use my oak shortbow, which I already have, and all of my arrows, which I got as drops. I'm hoping 28 iron knives is enough. There's level 3 range and I for sure do not have enough knives, they just disappear. We got 40 more knives, there's level 4 range, and there's level 5 range, we actually have enough knives to finish it, perfect. We can now wield our oak shortbow and with that all the arrows we got from moss giants and heal giants as well. Good morning, this is such a weird feeling, waking up and being excited to play runescape only to realize you're playing an account that looks like this, I don't know, it's so surreal to me, um, but we're always starting the day off with a little bit of farming, we're now up to level 5 which is perfect because now we can plant onions. And the early goal is to get to level 9 as fast as possible so we can start planting guams. That's gonna help us in our herblore training as well. It is time for us to start our very first quest and for that I'm gonna need some food. We are now located in the center of the Varlamor and there is a food shop but next to the food shop there is a pub and funnily enough the pub sells better things for us to eat. We got stews which heal us 11 in 1 bite. We have meat pies which heal us 12 in 2 bites. So we're gonna do a nice balance of both and the best part about this look at this these never deplete so you can get a ton of these basically for free uh, and yeah I do think my stats are high enough even though I don't have prayer to complete the twilight's promise this is going to be very crucial for the account because it unlocks the teleportation around with the bird and I just don't have that at the moment and walking with one agility is pretty slow. Here, for some reason not having prayers and not having teleports out is actually kind of scary because we're now entering
fighting the Colosseum. We need to fight a guy that's gonna be like level 90 combat. I really don't know what to expect. I have food. I mean, I even got a strength potion from Dr. Jekyll, but I'm still nervous, man. I mean, we we're talking hardcore Iron Man account on the line here. I'm going in with this gear. Okay, well, if we die, uh, the season ends, the fun ends. So that's the, that's the thing, but I do believe I can just hit a bunch of zeros. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Okay, this guy does not hit at all. I'm gonna keep myself super healthy. Yo, I'm hitting 13s. There it is. The fight was very easy. If you're wondering with the D stats, 41, 66 and 51. I only needed four stews. So very relaxing now that this is done. There's our first seed. Use it on a bird. And we can now teleport all the way to Tiomat, which is kind of huge because here lays a very good method for me to train prayer later on down the line. So that's going to be a super useful location. And there it is. Ability to use Quetzal Civitas, Le Fortis Teleport and 3000 Thieving XP alongside one quest point. That is perfect. Until the point where we have more Hunter XP and we can actually start doing Hunter Rumors. There is a little bit of a limit when it comes to teleportations with the bird. We got an unlock on the Tiomat. We can also teleport to the Sunset Coast which actually is going to be quite helpful, not gonna lie. So this teleports me pretty much right next to fishing spots, right next to crabs which are down here and hill giants which are right here and moss giants which are all the way up here. So this is like an area that I spend a lot of time in anyway so that's a really good teleport to unlock. We then also have the hunter's guild teleport and the main city teleport so not too much but fairly useful I'd say. There is level 44 attack. If you're wondering why is this guy training attack all of a sudden, the plan is simple. We just got to 66 strength, which means I now get an extra max hit. I'm now hitting 12s. From here on out, the plan is to get to 75 combat. With that, we will unlock the next exception, which is Slayer. We will be manually training Slayer through Konar, but not taking any loot and only using gear obtained in Varlamor. So we're gonna go out of our way to get our Slayer requirement completed. But for that, I first need 75 combat, and that is quite hard to obtain. So we're working on getting a bunch of attack levels and then defense levels, balance out our stats and get basically higher combat. I'm also killing bandits here because they have a one in 64 chance of an eight air rune drop. Air runes are super useful right now until the point where we start Perilius Moons. After the fact, I can get all of these just for from the store that is located right here in Kamturum. I'll be able to get all the runes I will ever desire from the shop in this place. More on that later. We actually farmed almost 100 air runes, which is pretty good. Obviously, the goal is to get to 40 so I can teleport to house and train 10 construction, which is what I basically need in order to unlock Perilius Moons. What just happened there was 12 magic and I just want one more level and then we can go ahead and start casting fire strikes, which should be huge. The only problem that I see right now now, Fire Strike costs me two air runes, whilst Earth Strike costs me one air rune, and it might actually be better to just keep Earth Striking. Wait, let me do a very quick calculation here. So I'm gonna try to splash and see what we're looking at. So for Fire Strike, we're getting 12 XP, and for Earth Strike, we're getting 9 XP. 100% Earth Strike is the better way to go, because I basically have unlimited Earth Runes, whilst I do not have unlimited Air Runes. So yeah, Earth Strike is gonna be what we're gonna do. There we go, we are now level 15 Magic, which means we can cast... Never mind, we can't cast Wind Ball. Yet I thought we could, my bad. Out of air runes again, we went from 11 to 16 magic. One more level to go until we can start casting wind bolts, and I do think that's gonna increase XP per hour just by a little bit. We like these events a lot, and if you guys do not know, we are 129 XP away from level 10. We need to lamp it all the way to 20. How much XP do we get here? 135 in Hunter. We are now level 10. Perfect. And there's level 40 thieving as well. We can now thief from city guards, which should actually be quite helpful. I do believe this is going to be a somewhat solid way to make money until we're level 55 or 50 in order to thieve those citizens. But let's take a look. 46 experience per pickpocket. And we also get, yeah, 30 coins per pickpocket. There's level 17 magic. 
magic. I do believe with this we can now cast wind bolts. I shouldn't really cast anymore. I don't have that many air runes available. But there it is. We're now using two air runes per cast, but we're using chaos runes. So we should be getting more XP, I hope at least. Uh, but yeah, this is my loop. After every trip, I bank all my items. I come here with all the runes I got, and then I pick the full inventory of cakes, and then I repeat the loop pretty much. The stats are looking very good already. 49 attack, 66 strength, 51 defense. We're almost 69 combat as well. Magic is getting up there. I like it, man. It's just, this is so chill. So relaxing. I don't know why I'm enjoying this so much. Getting to 21 magic would also be huge because I have actually quite a lot of nature runes and fire runes just sitting around, which I could use in order to, well, train more magic and get a little bit more money as well. Somehow, some way, I have been preparing for this moment for the longest time and then I missed it. But I just got 31 prayer, which is a massive prayer accomplishment. We can now cast ultimate strength. It may not seem like a big deal, but with that, we can now increase our strength by 15%. Now, obviously, I can't have that on all the time. With all the years of playing Deadman mode, one tick flicking has never been easier. So this is probably what I'll do when I feel like it and if I'm not AFKing and I should be hitting more than 12s right now. My very first Molly random event. Let's see what we get from this one. I do believe you get gems usually from this. But again, this is something I haven't done in like probably five plus years. Yeah, three diamonds. That is definitely worth doing. I mean, at some point, I probably will end up training crafting simply because if I were to grind it out all the way to 69 or 72, I could get myself a full mixed set, which could be huge for this account and is something that I will probably do at some point. If you ever wondered what sadness looks like, it is dead onions paired with dead marigold paired with dead cabbages. Everything is dead. Nine farming is our cue to start planting guam leaves. I've been pretty on top of the farm runs for the last... Okay, I can't say that. I'm level 9. I'll try to do this every like hour or two because Herblore is going to be really hard to train. There's level 41 thieving and no signs of guam seed just yet. Guam seed exists. I guess every time I'm doing a farm run, I'll also do thieving until I get a guam seed basically. Eventually, I want this to be taromine seeds because that will allow me to make strength potions once I'm at 12 herblore. So it's gonna go hand in hand. It's gonna be slow. It is what it is. Let's get it done. All right, then let's talk about the prayer method that's gonna get us all the way from 31 prayer to 43 and then eventually, who knows? For this method to work, all you're gonna need is your combat gear. You're gonna need some coins and you're gonna need a chisel. You're gonna travel to Sunset Coast and then depending on the state of your account, if you need food, you can run a little bit south to the fishing shop. You can trade Piscaria and there is a nice assortment of fish here by a bunch of cod. I know for a fact I won't need this much food. We're gonna cook a little bit of food. Uh, so once you have the full inventory of bones, you return back to the bird. With the bird, you travel to the Tiomat. And once you are at the Tiomat, you run a little bit south and you bless your bones on the exposed altar. Once the bones are blessed, chisel down those bones to create blessed bone shards. And there's a dragon impling here. That could be extremely good. And as you're chiseling those down, you can go back and just keep grinding the big bones. We need to get approximately 7,000 of these things in order to finish the 43 prayer. After you have all of the blessed bone shards that you plan on using, you simply buy vines from the shop and you bless those vines again on this altar. And then you need approximately one vine for 400 blessed shards. And that's the prayer experience be right there. I might do a thousand to start off with. Oh, this gives decent crafting XP actually. We're now level two crafting. I actually didn't think about that. 10 XP per bone. Probably gonna get a little bit of uh, starting crafting XP doing this. I noticed I didn't need a single food for my first hill giant trip, so maybe my stats are high enough to where I can self-sustain. From this point on, I'm going one level in attack, one level in defense. One level in attack, one level in defense. And we're gonna keep doing that till we reach 75 combat. Once your inventory is a little bit too full and you want to get rid of your blessed bone shards and actually convert them into your prayer XP, you make your way slightly east to the pub, you trade the bartender, and here you have it, jugs of wine. You need one per 400, so in this case, let's just buy two, uh, but obviously we could also just buy more, so why not? Let's just buy all of them. And with those jugs of wine, by the way, as you can saw, they cost one coin each and you can buy basically infinite amount, which is super good. You just make your way back to the bird, which is just slightly up north. Travel with your bird back to the Tiomat, run south and bless your vines. I now have jugs of blessed vine and later on, once you have sunfire splinters, you can theoretically make this even better. I don't have those yet, but if I wanted to improve the XP per hour, I could do the first stage of Colosseum, for example. I currently don't have the stats for that or the prayer required to do that just yet, but once I do, I most likely will. 
and then you make your way to the room just slightly north of the altar and right here you have the libation bowl in a libation bowl as you can see we used our vine and by simply spam clicking on it 500 prayer experience per bone we're now level 32 prayer that is a lot of xp that is like really really a lot of xp by the way and the best thing about it is you can spam click it like that however as you can see we went out of our bones very quickly but we nearly got two levels for that so that's the method that's how you do it we got another genie that's going straight into hunter and we are one lamp away from 11. 52 defense and 70 combat, 5 more levels to go till we can start training Slayer. I got nearly 2000 blessed bone shards and it is time to get a little bit more prayer XP. We are currently level 33, 34 and 72 combat, we're now level 35. Dude, this is so crazy. Oh, and we ran out of prayer points, so we have to actually recharge our prayers. So we're all the way up to 35 prayer right now. We can now also pray incredible reflexes. You're basically edging yourself, collecting these blessed bone shards, knowing that that's experience that can be instantly converted in like a shit ton of prayer XP. Anyways, let's keep it going. We're up to 36, still have a bunch of shards left, up to 37, and that is everything being used right now. We are a proud owner of Protect from Magic. I don't really think there is many mobs that this can help me against i'm going right back to hill giants but these are the stats at the moment 58 defense 66 strength 52 attack i've also been steadily working on my cooking level every time i start a trip i just cook a full inventory of food i don't see a reason why i wouldn't do it back once again with a couple of bone shards let's take a look at where we get to right now we start on on 37 that should be 38 all the way up to 39 and very close to 40 actually there it is 61 hit points and 73 combat only two more combat levels until we start training slayer stats are starting to look actually kind of ridiculously good and a very small update that i haven't done in a while two days and seven hours played on the account already i need a life it is a brand new day and I've been very consistent yesterday with my farm runs and thieving runs all the way to 45 thieving. I started at 40 and we're also all the way up to 18 farming. Now after every farm run I do need to pickpocket because I do need seeds all the way to 15 crafting by simply chiseling down the bones and I do think I'm very close to having enough shards for 43 prayer. A few more inventories and we are done. Also you may notice that I don't have any other items. That's because before I do the full trip I actually just drop everything onto the floor like all the other drops and i just fill the inventory full of bones and then i pick the drops back up just like that you see we got some nature runes water runes and my frog token all nicely waiting for me on the floor back once again to my favorite spot in varlamor let's get some prayer xp starting at 39 moving up to 40 okay all the way to 41 Two more levels to go. Not bad at all, honestly. All the way to 41 prayer. We can now cast protect from missiles, which basically fully protects us from all the range attacks. So that's going to be super useful. But the most important one is protect from melee. We're two levels off. We are so close to be done with the prayer grind. Let's take a look. Starting on 41, moving up to 42. How close to 43? Oh, we're nearly there. We are nearly there. This has been a long time coming. A maze random event. Right now, my total level is 447. Still made it up quite fast. 75% success rate. And let's see if we get any better rewards. We got a bunch of steel arrows, some coal, and a bit of nature runes. Not the best, not the worst. I actually do have a lot of steel arrows already. Simply because I've killed so many hill giants for this prayer training. I hope this is going to be enough. I think it should be. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we are now a proud owner of 43 prayer and the uh, protect from melee, which is honestly massive for the account. This single prayer can make me kill almost any single mob in the game, basically. And uh, that was perfectly calculated without even doing any calculations. That's crazy. And with this prayer level out of the way, we are now fully equipped in order to tackle on our next grind, which is going to be the Slayer grind. In the next episode, we are exclusively leaving Varlamor and getting all of the requirements needed in order to complete the Perilius Moons quest. If you guys do not want to miss the episode number 3, make sure you subscribe and if the video gets 6 likes, I will do my best to upload episode number 3 as soon as possible. Have a good one and bye bye.